Okay, hello everybody. How are you all doing? Um, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, work here with the stuff you did today. Um, sorry I didn't have this set up before. I, uh, uh, you know, as of, as of last night so that you could have viewed it before you walked into class today. But in any case, uh, I'm going to go over some, some of the uh, concepts behind uh, eccentricity and hopefully it'll clear up some uh, any issues you had with the worksheet today that you did. Um, those were all practice regions questions and that's an example of the kind of questions they may ask dealing with eccentricity. So first thing, uh, what eccentricity is, just to give you a quick uh, rundown, it's the it's basically a measure of how oval an orbit is. Um, the planets when they revolve around the Sun in our solar system they move around in an oval shaped orbit uh, and that's what we call an ellipse and to, to measure how oval that is we call that eccentricity but um, we'll see more about that as the lesson goes on let me just go through this I have my laptop over here so I'll be uh, over here switching the slides every once in a while okay so the first thing we've talked about the word uh, revolution um, uh, several times throughout the year but just to be clear it's the movement of one object around another and so if we remember what we learned about the geocentric versus the heliocentric model um, the geocentric was with the earth at the center uh, of the universe and everything revolving around it and the heliocentric which is the current model that we accept of, uh, that explains how our solar system is that uh, the sun is at the center with the other planets revolving around it um, the one thing that was the same about both of those models, remember, was that the moon uh, always revolved around the Earth in either case. So that was the one thing that was uh, the same about it. In any case, uh, let's see. So I guess we can move right on to the next slide here. Uh, what shape do celestial objects move in? And so this is where we come up with the term ellipse. Okay? Planets and moons, uh, they don't revolve around in perfect circles, although... To be honest with you, when you see the orbit of Earth around the Sun, if you could look at it from above, to your eyes it probably would look like a perfect circle. And so on uh, Regent's question where it says which orbit uh, most accurately represents Earth's orbit around the Sun, you would choose the one that looks most circular, even though, even though it, it is actually slightly oval shaped. Okay. So. Um, so planets and moons uh, move around the sun in the shape of an ellipse, an oval shaped orbit. You could just go through and copy these notes as I'm going through the PowerPoint in this lesson, or um, I don't know how crazy this is going to be if everybody starts emailing me at one time. Um, I guess there's probably some other way I could have done it, but um, short of making a whole website and posting it up to there, what you could do is email me and I'll send you um, this PowerPoint if that's if that's better. I'll do that for this first one if it's going to get crazy with me. Uh, you know, if I have 170 people and I have to go through and send everybody that, well, I guess I'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, so I will send that to you though, at least for the first time. And my email address was on the board today. Hopefully you saw that and copied it. If you didn't, it's rframpton at schools.nyc.gov gov. Okay. So let's keep moving on here. Okay, so an ellipse then is a flattened circle or an oval. And um, this is commonly the way you'll see a diagram uh, representing the orbit of a planet. And what you'll see here are these two dots that are called foci. Foci is the plural. Uh, the singular form would be focus. Each one is a focus to foci. Okay, and so this would be the path of some object, some celestial object revolving around. Okay, now you should know that in our solar system the Sun is located at one of these foci and so this might be the Sun let's say and then the other one would just be an empty space there wouldn't necessarily be anything there and so 
Here are some other terms you have to know. Um, the distance between the foci is going to be very important. We're going to have to figure that out at some point. And then the, the distance from one edge of the orbit, straight line through the foci, to the other end of this oval-shaped orbit, uh, that's called the major axis. And we abbreviate that or, or um, symbolize that with the, with the capital letter L. Okay? And so that's important because uh, if you look for, on your reference tables on the first page, you'll see the formula for eccentricity, which is distance between foci divided by the length of the major axis. So once you've determined those distances, those lengths, then we can plug it into the formula and calculate the eccentricity of this orbit, okay? Which again is a measure of how flat um, or how oval shaped an ellipse is. Okay. So now in this example, um, I've taken kind of a unique example where the two foci are on top of each other, okay? And when that happens, um, the distance between the foci, that is zero, obviously. And if it's zero, that's the number that's going to go on top of the equation. And then on the bottom, whatever distance we came up with for the major axis. In this case, this is supposed to represent one centimeter. So you put one on the bottom, and uh, zero divided by one then is zero. So, in this case, when you have a focal distance, or the distance between foci is zero, then what you get is a perfect circle. Okay, and it pretty much looks like a perfect circle, I'm sure, to you. And so, that's it for that one. Um, okay, and then what's the... What's the most extreme ellipse going in the other direction? Okay, becoming less circular, more oval shaped. Um, that would be when the two foci are as far as apart as possible. Okay, they're they're the same distance apart as the major axis length. Okay, so in this case, the major axis is 10 centimeters, and the distance between the foci is also 10 centimeters. And when that happens, 10 divided by 10 is one, and this is an example of a line. Okay, this is a line. When the, when the distance between foci and major axis are the same. Alright, so what you'll see then as we go on is anytime you look at the orbit of a planet and the eccentricity of that orbit is closer to 1, that means it has a higher eccentricity. It means it's more oval shaped. And the closer it is to 0, the more circular it is. Kind of makes sense if you, if you want to help remember it, um, that the one is like a line and the zero is like a circle. Okay. So, at this point, uh, probably a good idea to practice some examples. And um, what you may have to do is go back to the worksheet you had today and look at a couple of problems if you, you were stumped on them. Um, what you could do is to measure these distances now uh, and use the reference tables as a ruler on the edge of it. Um, actually, the new 2011 edition of the reference tables lost the ruler. They took that away. So I guess that means in the future they're going to give you uh, these distances. But for now, go ahead and measure them using the ruler on the reference tables. And in my examples here, the first one, I have a major axis length of 10 centimeters and the distance between the foci is 6 centimeters. So that would be 6 over 10, if you remember what the formula was on the front cover of the reference tables. Uh, 6 divided by 10 then is 0.6. 0 0.6, and that's the answer. Notice there are no units. When we're doing eccentricity, there's no units because the units cancel out when you do the, do the division. Okay. Um, as for the second problem, we have a distance between foci of 12 and the major axis length is 15. So 12 divided by 15, uh, I, don't, I didn't do the math there, so you can calculate that one. But that's how you would set it up, okay? And what you should find, though, is that 
this one we said was 0.6, right? You should find that this is going to be even a higher number. Again, I don't know, I can't do that in my head. 12 divided by 15, but it should be closer to 1. Okay, this should be a higher number. And therefore, it has a higher eccentricity and is more oval shaped. It's more elliptical. Okay? All right. So this now, what we're starting right this moment, is the material that's going to be used for tomorrow's lesson. So you should um, go through this stuff and listen to me right now, what I'm telling you about this. Take some notes um, and then apply it tomorrow in the, the lesson with the sub. Okay? Uh, actually, I'm going to break this into two parts, this lesson right here. I'm going to post this on YouTube. This first thing that I just finished up is part one. And um, I'll stop it here, and then in a few moments I'll record part two. Okay?